In this Easy Ed video lecture, we are going to learn about the De Moivre's theorem and its applications. Find the value of 1 minus i raised to 10. This is equal to 1 minus i, 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 1 minus i. You would need to open the brackets and multiply all these together and simplify powers of i. Ah. Tedious. Instead, we can take help from Mr. Abraham de Moivre, who stated the de Moivre's theorem as follows. Let z equal to r times cos theta plus i sine theta and n be the rational number. Then, z power n equals r power n times cos n theta plus i sine n theta. This says to raise a complex number to a power, raise the modulus to that power and multiply the argument by that power. This theorem has a lot of applications. First, it is useful in computing positive powers of a complex number. Next, it helps in computing nth roots of a complex number or rather finding roots of an algebraic equation. Further, this formula also connects complex numbers and trigonometry. It helps in expansion of sine n theta and cos n theta in powers of sine theta and cos theta and also expansion of sine power n theta and cos power n theta in terms of sine and cosines of multiples of theta. Let us see how we can use it for computing positive powers of a complex numbers. Let us bring back. First, let us write 1 minus i in polar form. Calculating, we get r equal to square root 2 and theta equal to minus pi by 4. So, the polar form is square root 2 times cos of minus pi by 4 plus i sine minus pi by 4. Applying de Moivre's theorem gives square root 2 times cos of minus pi by 4 plus i sine minus pi by 4 whole power 10 equals square root 2 power 10 times cos of 10 times minus pi by 4 plus i sine 10 times minus pi by 4. Simplifying, we get the final answer to be minus 32i. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Next, let us see how we can apply de Moivre's theorem for computing nth roots of complex number or rather finding roots of an algebraic equation. Let the equation of z power n equal to cos theta plus i sine theta. Then z becomes equal to cos theta plus i sine theta to the power 1 by n, which is further equal to cos 2k pi plus theta plus i sine 2k pi plus theta to the power 1 by n. Applying de Moivre's theorem, this equation reduces to cos 2k pi plus theta by n plus i sine 2k pi plus theta by n. Putting k equals 0, 1, 2 and so on up to n minus 1, all n roots of the equation are obtained. Suppose we want to find all the complex cube roots of 27i, we first write 27i in polar form. So, the polar form is 27 times cos pi by 2 plus i sin pi by 2. Therefore, 27i to the power of 1 by 3 equals 27 times cos pi by 2 plus i sin pi by 2 to the power of 1 by 3, which is further equal to 27 times cos 2k pi plus pi by 2 plus i sin 2k pi plus pi by 2 to the power of 1 by 3. Using de Moivre's theorem, this becomes 27 to the power 1 by 3 times cos 4k plus 1 times pi by 6 plus i sine 4k plus 1 times pi by 6, where 27 to the power 1 by 3 equals 3. Putting k equals 0, 1, 2, we get all the three values of 27i to the power 1 by 3. We start with k equals to 0. This gives 
Z1 equals 3 times cos pi by 6 plus I sine pi by 6. Simplifying, we get 3 times root 3 over 2 plus 3 by 2i. Next, we take k equal to 1. Simplifying as before, we get z2 equals minus 3 times root 3 over 2 plus 3 by 2i. Further, we take k equal to 2. Simplification with this value of k gives z3 equals minus 3i. Hence, the complex cube roots are z1 equals to 3 times root 3 over 2 plus 3 by 2i. z2 equals to minus 3 times root 3 over 2 plus 3 by 2i. And z3 equal to minus 3i. Let us now graph these roots in a complex plane. The roots of a complex number are cyclical in nature. That is, when the points are plotted on a polar plane or a complex plane, the points are evenly spaced around the origin. Next, let us look at one more example. Suppose we want to solve the equation x cubed minus 48 equal to 0. The solutions to this equation are the same as those of the equation x cubed equal to 48. That means, we have to find the cube roots of 48. We use the steps as before. First, write 48 in polar form, which is 48 times cos 0 plus i sin 0. Therefore, 48 to the power 1 by 3 equals 48 times cos 0 plus i sin 0 to the power 1 by 3 which further equals 48 times cos 2k pi plus i sine 2k pi. Applying de Moivre's theorem, we get it equal to 48 to the power 1 by 3 times cos 2k pi by 3 plus i sine 2k pi by 3, where 48 to the power 1 by 3 equals 3.63. Putting k equals 0, 1, 2, we get cube roots of 48 as follows. Z1 equal to 3.63 times cos of 0 plus i sine of 0, which is equal to 3.63. Z2 equal to 3.63 times cos of 2 pi by 3 plus i sine of 2 pi by 3, which is equal to minus 1.82 plus 3.14i and z3 equal to 3.63 times cos of 4 pi by 3 plus i sine of 4 pi by 3, which is equal to minus 1.82 minus 3.14i. Hence, these three roots are the solutions of the equation x cubed minus 48. On graphing the solutions, we notice that the points are the vertices of an equilateral triangle which re-emphasizes the fact that the roots of a complex number are cyclical in nature. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Now let us see how de Moivre's theorem helps in expanding sine and theta and cos and theta in powers of sine theta and cos theta. Let us see this with the help of an example. Suppose, we want to prove that cos of 5 theta equals 16 cos power 5 theta minus 20 cos cube theta plus 5 cos theta. The idea is to write in two different ways. We use both the binomial theorem and de Moivre's theorem and compare the results. Using the binomial theorem, we get cos theta plus i sine theta power 5 equals cos power 5 theta minus 10 cos cube theta times sine square theta plus 5 cos theta times sine power 4 theta plus i times 5 cos power 4 theta times sine theta minus 10 cos square theta times sine cube theta plus sine power 5 theta. By de Moivre's theorem, we get cos theta plus i sine theta power 5 equals cos 5 theta plus i sine 5 theta. So, 
we can equate the right hand sides to get cos 5 theta plus i sine 5 theta equal to cos power 5 theta minus 10 cos cube theta times sine square theta plus 5 cos theta times sine power 4 theta plus i times 5 cos power 4 theta times sine theta minus 10 cos square theta times sine cube theta plus sine power 5 theta. Now cos 5 theta is the real part of the right hand side. So equating the real sides and simplifying, we get cos 5 theta equal to 16 cos power 5 theta minus 20 cos cube theta plus 5 cos theta. Note that this equation will also give sine 5 theta by equating the imaginary parts of both sides of the equation and simplifying. The final application deals with the expansion of sine power n theta and cos power n theta in terms of sines and cosines of multiples of theta. Before going further, let us first make a few observations. Suppose we want to show that cos power 5 theta equals 1 over 16 times cos 5 theta plus 5 cos 3 theta plus 10 cos theta. Suppose z equals cos theta plus i sin theta. Then z plus 1 by z equals 2 cos theta. And 2 times cos theta whole power 5 equals z plus 1 by z whole power 5. Simplifying, we get 32 times cos power 5 theta equals z power 5 plus 1 by z power 5 plus 5 times z cube plus 1 by z cube plus 10 times z plus 1 by z. Using the observations made earlier and simplifying, we get the required results. Let's have a quick review of what we've studied in this lecture. We started with the statement of the De Moivre's theorem. Then, we saw the applications of De Moivre's theorem.